Starcraft in five minutes. Sort of. Everything you need to know about the story so far. Spoiler alert. Welcome to the future, but it's not all flying cars and sex robots. Ah, oh, hell. This thing ain't gonna hold. There's this alien race called the Zerg that expands onto soiled bathroom mats, and they want to eat pretty much everything. The humans, called Terrans, are fighting among themselves. Terrans are really into video conferencing, and they call each other a lot about emergencies, including this one involving a group of colonists in trouble. Distress beacon activated. Marshal Jim Rayner tries to save them from a Zerg attack and torches an infected human base in the process. It belonged to the Confederacy, a human faction with an underdeveloped sense of humor. You will immediately tell me why you have called me from my desk, Private! Under Arcturus Mengsk, they all go looking for some data disks, which reveal the Confederates knew about the Zerg problem, but kept it a secret. His sidekick Kerrigan helps a colony rebel against the Confederates and poaches one of their leaders, named Duke. This is the last straw for the Confederates, who attack. Meanwhile, Kerrigan does some research and finds plans for this Zerg homing beacon device. Turns out the Confederacy was using it to trick Zerg into attacking their enemies. It worked okay, but then the Zerg decided to just kill everything. Mengsk and friends turn around and use the thing on the Confederacy, which ticks off Rainer and Kerrigan. Not to mention the Zerg, who come as called and kill a bunch of <laughs> Oh, so also, there's this other race called the Protoss. They see all this happening and they're like, really? They take everything very seriously, so they come in and try to clean up the mess. But all three sides just end up fighting each other, and Kerrigan gets stranded in a Zerg rush. That's when Manx reveals he's a megalomaniac supervillain who won't be stopped by anyone, and he names himself Emperor of the Terran Dominion. But the Zerg don't really care. They're led by the Overmind, a big eyeball that talks like the guy from Hellraiser. No more games. He's really particular about this chrysalis thing, and he wants it to go to this planet called Char, which is basically just an ashy bonfire pit. Kerrigan suddenly pops out of it for some reason, and the Overmind starts going on about a sleeper being reborn. Arise, Kerrigan. Turns out Kerrigan is now a Zerg agent, which makes things awkward when she and Rainer run into each other. Kerrigan, what have they done to you? She may have transitioned into an insectoid monster, but she still rocks the hair and makeup. She spares Rainer's life and runs off to become more evil. She was a scary telepath called a ghost before she got all Zergalicious. Ghosts are really hot and interesting and should have their own game, but probably never will. Meanwhile, things go all alien for the Terrans, and the Protoss show up again to confuse everything. Apparently, every race in the galaxy has installed compatible video conferencing systems so they can just pop in and talk to each other whenever they want. But yet, they're still always surprised when someone jumps into a conversation. Impossible. The Protoss have come up with a way to cripple the Zerg. They send the Dark Templar Zeratul to kill a Zerg Cerberate named Sass. But it backfires when Overmind performs some psychic kung fu on the Templar's mind to find the location of Ayer, the Protoss homeworld. It turns out the Zerg and Protoss were created by this ancient race called the Zelnaga. The Overmind wants to merge them into a super race called the Eternal Swarm. The Protoss kind of hate this idea, and so a bunch of them have a quick video conference about it. This guy Tassadar pulls a Gandalf and tells the Zerg that this shall not pass. Shall not pass! Everyone builds some units and employs some strategy in real time, but it's going to take more than that to kill the Overmind, who's still camping out on Ire. Tassadar makes the ultimate sacrifice and crashes his ship into Mr. Eyeball. It works, but now Ire looks like a McDonald's parking lot, ruined and covered in unidentifiable goo. So the Protoss give it up as a lost cause and head to the Dark Templar world of Shakuras. Dark Templars are kind of like space ninjas with lightsabers. But Kerrigan suddenly shows up to drop some fancy crystals into this Zelnaga temple and is like, I'm sorry I'm a Zerg, but it's all good because the Overmind is dead and wasn't that cool to begin with anyway. But apparently Overminds grow faster than hippies at a drum circle because a new one's forming on Char. It's great that everyone's working together, right? Not really. Surprise, surprise, Kerrigan is actually still evil and was working for the Zerg all along. She bails while the rest of the crew delivers the crystals to the temple, which does its best Independence Day impression and wipes out all the nearby Zerg. While all this is going on, the Terran United Earth Directorate under General de Gaulle figures out that Manx is being a total space jerk with his Dominion project and they go after him and the Overmind. Despite her clearly being very, very evil, everyone still trusts Kerrigan. But not so fast. She takes out Duke and Phoenix. Rainer is really sad about his bro Phoenix dying and vows he'll take down Kerrigan. I'm the man who's gonna kill you someday. I'll be seeing you. She's already over on Char though, poning the Overmind and taking over the Zerg. Yeah, she's evil but not as evil as this random Duran guy, who it turns out has actually been masterminding the whole Zerg-Protoss hybrid race thing in his spare time. But everyone's still pissed at Kerrigan for betraying them like a hundred times, so they attack her. But she kicks their asses again, but lets them live so they can rebuild and she can incorporate them into the Zerg swarm. All this is very disturbing and everyone freaks out. De Gaulle puts a bullet in his brain pan, Zeratul goes into exile, and Raynor grabs his leather jacket and goes chasing after Manx. Kerrigan disappears, hopefully to change her evil ways. But the real issue is probably Duran, who is also nowhere to be found. Maybe Rainer will be like, Hey Duran, I'm on the hunt. I'm after you. My mouth is alive with juices like wine. I 